Hello, everybody. Welcome to How to Make Your Wife Happy and Healthy. Today, we have a special edition. Try something new. Where we try a new dish and let you know what we think. Something we have never done in our kitchen before. In today's dish, we're going to mix some noodles and tomatoes and basil to make a wonderful dish that's impossible to mess up. So come on, everybody. Let's get cooking. It's time for another hot dish from Happy Healthy Wine. Today's shout out goes to doctors, doctors and nurses, and nurses, nurses fighting, fighting the corona, corona virus. 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 Special thank you to all those doctors and nurses out there who are battling this horrible disease and are on the front lines putting themselves in danger. If you would like a shout out in my next video, stay tuned to the end to find out how. Here are the ingredients. Two tablespoons olive oil. One small onion, diced. Ten vine ripened tomatoes, chopped roughly. Two cloves of garlics, crushed like my dreams of being a superstar saxophonist. One and a half cups chicken stock. A quarter cup thinly sliced fresh basil. One teaspoon of kosher salt. Half a teaspoon of ground black pepper. Quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes. One pound of pasta. We're using shells. Since chopped and tomatoes will by far take the longest of any other vegetable preparation, I'm going to start with those. So I'm going to start by taking off the tops of the vine ripened tomatoes. This recipe calls for vine ripened tomatoes. If you're wondering what happened to my thumb, we'll talk about that when we cut the onion. We have the vine ripened tomatoes. We're going to take off the vine. Take the store, throw all the vine stuff away. Then we're going to peel every single one. Yes, we're going to peel all 10 of them. Because we have learned that it is much better to peel tomatoes you don't have the peel when you're trying to eat the dish. I can appreciate that. So I usually peel them right into the trash can. And today, my trash can is a bowl. See, they're using the vine ripened tomatoes because those are the ones that are going to taste better. I'm trying to buy the other ones that have not been ripened on the vine. Not going to be as flavorful as these ones. We want to make sure we use the best for this dish because it's a tomato. It's really the star of this dish. If you're going to substitute canned tomatoes, you'd probably want to use the ones that are whole tomatoes because those are decent and would probably work well in this dish. But we want to have a fresh dish today. So we're going to try it with tomatoes, vine ripened, and see how fresh flavored this dish can be. Now that we peel all the tomatoes, it's time to chop them up. I like to chop around the center. First time. So I can cut out the center and put that away. Do that for 10 of them. Then we'll chop them up. 
when you cook tomatoes, they kind of dissolve. So you don't really need to be very careful about the size of your tomato, tomatoes that are chopped. You just need to kind of chop them up. So you can see I cut around the center. Got that center part there that we don't want. So I'm just gonna cut it out and throw it away. Move on to the next one. Okay, a good rough chop on the tomatoes. Break them up, make them a little smaller. Don't have to really dice them too much. Just want to chop them. I'm going to turn my board, chop them this way. A lot easier than turning the food. Turn the board or chop them the other way. And I think that should be good enough. I'm going to cook them down later. Alright, so we're going to take all these tomatoes, put it into a bowl that we're going to use later. off the board and get ready for the next item. Having rinsed my board in water, I am now ready for the garlic because the garlic also goes with the tomatoes. We're going to put it with the tomatoes. So here's my cloves of garlic. Don't mind all the tomato juice in my thumb. Now I'm going to show you the way I get rid of the shells in the garlic. I twist to break the shell. Use my fingers to peel it off. Twist to break off the shell and pull it out. Twist the garlic. Break off the shell and pull out the garlic. There we go. Three cloves of garlic. We're going to put this in the tomato mixture because they go into the pot at the same time. So I use my favorite way to make it small. Chop it up using a cheese grater. A fine cheese grater. That little top part. Grate it down to that and can throw that away. And the third one. Now you make sure you put all that we got. The back side has a lot. The front side has some more. Just use your finger, run across, make sure you go with the grate so that you don't grate your finger. This side, go against, doesn't matter really, on that side. And there we go, garlic with tomatoes. A good start. Okay, we're gonna set aside tomatoes and garlic and get to the next item on the chopping block. Basil that's already been washed, ready for slicing. So we're gonna slice it up, add another fresh flavor to our spaghetti. Nice slices on the basil leaves. We'll make it oh so wonderful. And just slices. We're gonna chop up a little more than slices, I think. There we go. A nice flavor additive to any tomato dish, especially of the Italian variety. There we go. There was a nice chop. So let's put that aside. So let's put that aside in a separate dish. Because it's going to go in later, after the tomato and garlic. Bay is ready to go. Now I'm going to wash the board and we'll come back and chop the onion. To prepare the onion, I like to slice a little bit off the top. Slice a little bit off the bottom, and then peel those away. Peel off the outer brown layers, and one more layer along with it is my favorite thing to do. So let me get that one last layer off as well. So like one layer of the real onion. There we go. 
Now today I'm going to chop up really quickly using the full star vegetable chopper. This is where my thumb got injured. I'll let you know about that in a minute. And if you want to see the full star in all its glory, I am working on another video. It's probably already up of a kitchen gadget corner video that shows you how to use a full star and what I think of it. A nice little review. So let's chop up our onion. We're going to chop it into half. We're going to section off as I normally would for chopping onion. This side, and this side. These sides are going to go into the full star chopper and we're going to chop it up really finely. We're going to use this grate. And this is how I cut myself. I actually put my thumb inside and the grate is so sharp that it cut my finger and made it bleed a little. So we're gonna insert that blade. So be very careful not to touch that surface. Lock it in place. Put an onion piece on it. Close it down and instant chopped onion. A lot less tears than trying to chop it without such a device. So I'm going to, this one's a little thick. This piece is a little thick. Let's try it anyway. Smash right through. All right, let's do a couple more. Let's do the other one. So again, cut off these two edges. I want nice chops. Normally then I would slice in this way and then slice it this way to line it up. But this has the blades for it anyway. Done. Done. Get a little full. And done. One onion fully chopped. As you can see in here, one onion fully chopped without as many tears. So we've got all the ingredients ready to go with the Milfi Multi Pot. Take the lid off. We're going to first fry the onions for two minutes. Then we're going to fry the tomatoes and garlic for another two minutes. To start with, we're going to plug it in. Then it's going to turn on kind of. We're going to click on the saute button, which is right here at normal, and let it heat up for a minute. Then we're going to add the oil, add the onion in our from our full star vegetable cutter. I only kind of give you a better view of the Milfi multi on its own. So we're going to start. I can hear it heating up by adding about a tablespoon and a half of olive oil. Now my trick is to see if the oil moves smoothly. It's a little harder to do on this pot. We're going to, yeah, it's not moving smoothly at all. We're going to have to wait till it gets a lot hotter. Hmm. I'm starting to smell the olive oil, so maybe it's getting there. So as I move it, move the pot, look at how much the oil moves. Yeah, it's getting pretty close. Still a little thick. We want it to thin up quite a bit so we can put in with a sizzle. Do it again. Okay, it's running pretty smoothly. So let's go ahead and put in the onion. If it doesn't sizzle, that's okay. It'll still be good. Ah, yes, the sizzle. Get all that onion in there. Okay, you're gonna stir it up and let that cook for about two minutes so it's nice to caramelize. One reason why we got the full star vegetable cutter was so that I could have really small onion and the kids wouldn't complain about the big chunks of onion in their dishes.
You can see a lot of steam. You can see a lot of steam rising from our onion cooking. You do want to keep the multi pot away from woodwork and other stuff. It's very helpful to keep it away from your woodwork so you don't get all that oil and steam on it. Okay, we're starting to a little browning on the onion. It's been about two minutes. I'm going to go ahead and put in the tomato and garlic at the same time. I'm going to cook this for about two minutes. Okay, it's been about a minute and a half. Let's go ahead and stir it up. There we go, that was about two minutes cook time. Now it's time to add the basil. Put it right in there. Fresh basil. To that we're gonna add also a cup and a half of chicken stock. You might wonder why this is just water. Well, it's let me give you an epic food hack on why this is. It's time for an epic food hack. With Daddy! pour in the water, then we pour in the chicken granules for the chicken stock. For one and a half cups, one and a half teaspoons. Put that in, we'll stir it up together. Instead of heating up the chicken stock first, the water first, and making it chicken stock, we can just go directly. Quarter teaspoon of red hot peppers. It's a few dashes for us. Just gonna add some spice, you gotta be careful. There we go. And we want a teaspoon of salt. I pour my pan first so I get about the right amount. Okay, that's about a teaspoon of kosher salt. That's good. If you want more salt, you add more salt. We're going to add half a teaspoon of pepper. That's a good amount. We're going to stir that up a bit. Get it all mixed together. I've forgotten. Set of spaghetti. My daughter prefers shells. We're gonna try shells instead. Cooks about the same amount of time, so it should work fine. One pound of shells. And mix it in so that all the shells get submerged into the liquid. Make sure all the shells get into the liquid submerged. Don't want any of them out of the liquid. All right, that's pretty good. Push them all in. Doesn't matter if it really boils or not. Now it's time to seal it and put the pressure on. To set this to pressure, first you have to cancel your sauteing. Put on the lid. Close the lid. In the back, there is a lever. You want to make sure it's set to ceiling, all the way to ceiling over there. Otherwise, it won't take any pressure. Then, to the pot itself, we're going to click on pressure cook. And we're going to do five minutes. So I'm going to turn this down to five minutes. Do nothing. It's going to beep, and then it's going to start. And now it'll build up the pressure. Once the pressure builds up, the red button pops up. It'll cook for five minutes and then it'll be done.
From the top, you can see the steam coming from there. It's pretty hot. You can hear the pressure rising. In a minute, the button will pop up, and then it's going to start pressuring. Okay, the button has popped. It's time for the pot to go to pressure. There it goes. Pressure's ready. Now it's five minutes till done. All right, so the pressure part has done. The recipe asks us to wait five minutes for slow release and then quick release after that. So we're gonna wait for another five minutes. So that timer on the front hits five, quick release, and it's ready to eat. Okay, our five minutes wait time are up. So we're gonna put the quick release switch. I put it away from our woodwork just above so that it won't game onto the woodwork. So that quick release, as soon as the button pops back down and the steam stops, you can open it and be ready to put it into a pot to serve. Okay, a minute later, all the steam is released, the pressure's down. Hit the cancel button so it stops cooking. If you don't hit the cancel button, it's going to keep it warm. It might not make it like you like it. Twist and release. And your pasta dish is ready to eat. Let's take a close look at that dish. Your pasta dish is ready to eat. Now we're going to scoop it into a serving bowl. And see what the kids think. Onions. Hmm. It just tastes like tomato flavored pasta. It's like something you can get in a can, I guess. I can't pick them up. You know how in when you cook spaghetti and meatballs and you give me just these noodles with cheese and butter you can make me this instead and you can put in the sausage the Italian sausage with it too and I'd be happy with this Happy of the wife chef Barry, you remind me to try the like button just like my kids. Try that wonderful new tomato basil pasta dish we just made. What would you put in your own pasta dish? Please leave a comment down below letting me know what you put in your own pasta dish. And if you can include the word oregano in that comment, you'll have a chance at a shout out in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified of all my new videos that come out on Mondays. Thanks for watching. Have a happy and healthy day.